Why do German cars feel so solid underneath? And what exactly is the MQB platform? Today, let us walk through the full chassis installation process. From the previous episode, the fully assembled engine and transmission are lowered by a lift onto the chassis carrier, then moved to the first station on the sub-assembly line. The operator first tilts up the subframe, places three bolts, then installs the connecting plate. The left and right sides are installed the same way. After removing the tool, one more bolt is added. Next, the operator on the right installs the front exhaust pipe gasket. At the same time, the operator on the left places four bolts and installs the center tunnel connecting plate. Then the right side operator positions the muffler. The left side operator pre-tightens two bracket bolts. Finally, the right side operator places three fuel tank bolts. At the next station, the operator first places four bolts, then uses a lifting tool to position the rear axle onto the correct spot on the chassis carrier. This installation method will probably be criticized by many people as old-fashioned. At the following station, the operator tightens the two muffler bolts that were installed earlier. Next, three bolts connecting the particulate filter to the engine bracket are tightened, followed by four more bolts underneath. Careful viewers may notice that none of these bolts are tightened with an electronic wrench. So how do they prevent loose bolts? Does anyone know? At the next station, the operator again uses a semi-automatic lifting tool to place the rear exhaust section onto the chassis carrier. This rear exhaust section integrates two mufflers. After removing the lifting tool, lubricant is sprayed on the two hooks on the rear axle. The two rubber hangers of the exhaust are then hung onto these hooks. The exhaust system cannot be rigidly connected to the body, so these rubber hangers mainly serve to reduce vibration. At the next station, two operators work together to install the front muffler bracket. While the right side operator tightens the bracket, the left side operator installs the front to rear exhaust connection. After placing four nuts, the left side operator installs the center tunnel connector, while the right side operator also installs the fuel tank strap. Finally, the right side operator uses a dual head electronic wrench to tighten the two bolts connecting the front and rear mufflers. At the next station, the operator installs the rear suspension spring pivot into the lower control arm, then bolts the rear knuckle onto the lower control arm. After fixing its position, the nut is pre-tightened. The left and right sides are installed the same way, so only one side is shown here. The next station is an automated one, where machines on both sides tighten the rear knuckle bolts that were pre-installed earlier. At the following station, the operator installs the two brake fluid lines for the rear wheels. During installation, the lines must be clipped onto both the rear axle and the chassis carrier. These brake fluid lines carry brake fluid from the master cylinder to the brake calipers, creating braking force. Now the two lines are secured with clips. After the chassis is joined to the body, these clips help prevent noise caused by vibration. Finally, the left rear brake fluid line is connected. Brake fluid lines are this important, so does your car protect them well. At the next station, one rear axle bolt is placed first, then the right rear brake fluid line is installed, using the same method as the left side. After completion, another rear axle bolt is placed. Meanwhile, the left side operator installs five retaining clips for the two rear brake fluid lines. These low-carbon steel brake fluid lines are basically maintenance-free for life, as long as they are not damaged. Next, the left side operator installs the front oxygen sensor on the catalytic converter. The right side operator installs the temperature sensor, and both are tightened using an electronic wrench. Finally, the protective cover on the front exhaust flex pipe is removed. At the next station, the operator connects two metal pipes before and after the particulate filter. These two pipes eventually lead to a sensor. After installing the fuel line clip, the muffler heat shield is placed above the rear axle. This heat shield will be fully installed at a later station. At the next station, a torque wrench is used to tighten the oxygen sensor. Because this area is difficult to access, an electronic wrench is not used here. Finally, a 50-liter plastic fuel tank is installed, but this plastic is not ordinary plastic. Does anyone know why? At the next station, the operator installs the muffler heat shield that was prepared earlier, then installs the center tunnel heat shield. When installing the shift mechanism, the right side operator also places a heat insulation pad. 
After installing a clip, the right side operator uses an electronic wrench to tighten the front oxygen sensor. This is the oxygen sensor installed at an earlier station. You did not forget that, right? Next, the rear oxygen sensor wiring harness is organized according to the requirements. This step is very important because it is related to vehicle emissions, so the data from both oxygen sensors must be entered into the computer. At the next station, the operator snaps the ball end of the shift cable onto the transmission, then secures the cable to the bracket with clips. Finally, an electronic wrench is used to tighten the bolt connecting the shift cable, and the steering column wiring harness is organized. At this point, all chassis assembly work is complete. However, before the chassis is joined to the body, a simulation test is performed to check whether the rear knuckle and shift mechanism positions are accurate. After passing inspection, the chassis is transferred via the second floor platform to the main line, where it is joined with the body. This station is famously known as the marriage station. Finally, thank you all for your continued support.